Music. It's all around us. It isolates us and brings us together. It affects our emotions and helps us express them. Music. It helps us cope through life and break through boundaries. At the Oral Roberts University Music Therapy Clinic, a group of therapists are discovering new ways to harness the power of music to help people with difficult brain function disorders. Meet Henry Jones, a four-year-old client with autism. He was about two and a half when he was diagnosed with autism. You know, it was, it was hard when we got the diagnosis not to feel disappointed or sad or angry, but my wife and I both knew, and really everyone who's ever met Henry knows that there's just something really special inside of him. And what the oh. autism meant, it was just going to be that we had to work harder to get that to come out. Jackie Cox is a musical therapist and clinical supervisor for the ORU clinic. Henry has a nonverbal autism diagnosis. He recognizes his letters and his numbers, and he understands what you're saying. He just cannot communicate. Typical normal kids, they take that speech information as it is. Also, they analyze. For instance, good morning. They say good morning after waking up. Good afternoon. After lunch, they say good afternoon. So they actually analyze and then what to say, right? But children with autism, uh, usually they don't have that anal analytical uh, process. They just take it as it is. So the one evidence is echolalia. So if I say, uh, what do you want to drink? They will say, what do you want to drink? They just gonna say exactly uh, back to what they heard. That's called echolalia. So when I first met Henry about a year and a half ago, um, transitioning into music therapy, of course, a new therapist, a new experience, it was very difficult on him. So what I started out doing was more improvisation. I would let him explore the room and I would play things on the piano that might imitate what he was doing. So if he was playing the drum, I might play some repetitive notes on the piano. And that began making a connection. So he could look at me, then he started looking at me. It's like, oh, she's doing what I'm doing. Maybe that's not so scary. And then over the course of the last year and a half, we've just been working on vocalization. Can he vocalize? Will he vocalize? And so using um, songs that encourage vocalization story songs that we use. Hello, hello, brown bear, what do you like to eat? So we sing those two phrases, hello, hello, brown. And, and I pause, exactly, I pause and want him to, f to fill in the blank. And so whether he fills it in with a ba or just an ah or something like that, that's what I'm looking for at those early stages. Good, oh. So at the piano, one of the things I like to do is play a stop and go game. I have a stop sign with, you know, stop on one side, go on the other. I'll let the client just play whatever they want, and I'll sing a song, let's play silly sounds at the piano. And so it's making sounds like a chew or door creaking open or meow or go, go. And so they'll play all over the piano, let's make silly sounds at the piano. Let's make silly sounds, let's make silly sounds until we say, and I show him the stop sign. Stop. He's supposed to stop. I may have to prompt him with some physical prompting, um, have him point to the stop sign, and then the next initial is, can he say guh? Now say guh, 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 guh. Then I'll let him play again. Um, so that's learning, turn taking, waiting, um, following directions. We've noticed more consonant sounds that he's been making at home. And also eye contact has been a lot more improved since we started music therapy, as well as direction following and, as I said, social skills like sharing or, or turn taking. Can we tell the camera bye bye? Bye bye. Good job, buddy. Those are good words. This is Sylvia, an 80-year-old with dementia. How many grandchildren? Yeah. Hmm. I know I have some. <laughs> Patients with dementia, Alzheimer's uh, types of dementia, actual their you know white matters in brain structure are shrinking and damaged, and the result is they actually uh, 
they experience the loss of memory and uh, most of the cognitive functioning is going to be uh, deteriorated or diminished. My approach with patients with dementia or Alzheimer include um, singing songs because singing uses both sides of the brain so we can connect our left brain which is where the language is with our right brain which is the musical side and when you connect them those who have a hard time communicating can actually sing because they're using both sides of the brain together. What we're doing is a life story musical. Since these are little higher functioning clients, they, they can remember and have good memories and can communicate um, a favorite memory from growing up or a portion of their adult life. And so Sylvia shared that she was um, in the band and played clarinet. She originally wanted to play saxophone, but mom said, no, you need to play the clarinet first. And so she learned the clarinet, but never did get to play saxophone. So we've taken that information and turned it into a musical. So with her portion of the musical, we start with a song called Alexander's Ragtime Band and give all the clients um, different rhythm instruments and then they sing along and play those instruments. And at, we tell the story then, um, when Sylvia was in grade school, she wanted to play the clarinet, but she had to ask her mom, mom, can I play the clarinet? And mom said, so another patient is now the mom. And the other patient says, no, you need to learn to play the clarinet first. And so they have a little short conversation. It is prompted with a PowerPoint. And we have a recorder that, you know, doubles as a pretend clarinet for her. So she gets to pretend to play the clarinet. We implement exercises within the music therapy setting. We did that earlier today with the tambourine. Now, if you were doing that without music, it wouldn't be as interesting, right? So, but we add the music in and the, the clients are more focused on the music than just moving their feet. And it's easier because they have been entrained to the music, the rhythm of the music. Make my bid for that freckle faced kid I'm hurrying to. I'm going to Michigan to see the sweetest gal in Kalamazoo. I heard about him at Sunday school and I thought, oh, boy, I want to meet that Johnny Dean. Well, I know I've only met him, I married him. <laughs> can do what you want them to do in music therapy, that is good, but the most important thing is can they generalize it and use it in their daily life. That's our end goal. During our music therapy program you can see like a song triggers a memory. You can see that um, someone remembering a song and telling a story about something that triggers their memory then they think, oh yeah, it, it clicks with them too, and they go, that's, my mother did that with me too. They don't remember much of their you know, lives or what's going on right now. But when I sing, uh, I say, let me call you sweetheart, then they'll probably sing you back, I'm in love with you. Old, old songs, the songs that they've heard and learned when they were young, like maybe early, 20, it just, it's stored there. And uh, even though they don't memorize or they don't remember their children's names, but they do have intact memory of those songs. One example, um, one of my first patients that I worked with who was late stage Alzheimer's, um, she could not speak. She was uh, very limited movement. She was in a wheelchair. Throughout the course of working with her over about 12 weeks, um, we would see little gains where she would be tapping her foot while we're singing the song. Or she would try to speak and was able to get out one or two words of the song. And um, at the end of one of the sessions, we had sung her favorite song and she looked at me and said, Clear as a bell, I like that song. That's, that's the power of music. A lot of uh, people say that patients with dementia, it's really hard for them to learn new skills. 
But in our clinic, if we presented brand new instrument called tone chime or rain stick or chime bells, they actually have not seen that instrument. But um, they start to play, you know, with the color coded, letter coded, some of the great music therapy methods, they start to learn instruments. And that's to me uh, fascinating. Yes, they can still learn new things. And I think um, uh, music uh, provide that um, tool for them to learn. So what makes this work? Why does music have therapeutic effects on people? There is actually two uh, reasons why music therapy works. First is in uh, inherent structure in music. So the musical pattern, melody, rhythm, tempo, and uh, dynamics or instrumentations, those musical components uh, all combine together. It really uh, help um, certain experience for uh, patients and clients with different needs. The second reason is actually in the patients or clients, they just joy, um, they just enjoy the music itself and they have a, such a positive association with the musical experiences. Who didn't learn their ABCs by singing the ABC song? How many math songs are out there to help you learn math facts or the states, the, the states of the United States of America? Usually I avoid use this word but it's very fun. <laughs> so most of the client, they actually, music therapy should design very therapeutically and systemically, also scientifically, uh, our intervention to facilitate client specific target behavior. So it's very systematic, scientific, and therapeutic, but it's fun. Because of their success with people like Henry and Sylvia, the OOE Music Therapy Clinic anticipates a greater ability to help people through the power of music. A lot of people view music therapy still uh, having fun with music. Yes, we will have fun with music, but music therapy is a serious healthcare profession. It is evidence-based practice as well. Music is the, our uh, therapeutic tool. So if you don't deliver good quality of music, there's no therapy we can expect. But also, uh, it is actually therapy, so you need to have a therapeutic personality. In, in our clinic, we make differences in people's lives and that we cannot hide. So yeah, it will grow. One thing is evident and cannot be denied. Music is truly the language of the soul. It is an important pathway of communication to teach and enrich the lives of people. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs>